Hello, everybody. This is our fifth and final part of our series on motion, energy, and gravity. So I'm going to ask a simple question. Why doesn't the moon crash into the Earth? The moon is pulling on the Earth, and the Earth is pulling on the moon. They are pulling on each other with gravity. But the moon doesn't hit the Earth. Why is that? To understand this, we need to get into how things stay in orbit. So here I've got something uh, that's showing you the sun. Here's a planet going around the sun. And in order to stay in orbit, it has to have a minimum speed going around. It also There's also a maximum speed before it escapes. We'll get into that later on. Um, so remember, it's moving around. It would be just moving in this direction, but gravity is pulling on it. And that gravity is giving us the same tension that we have on a string that is uh, a ball going around on a string. It's the centripetal force, which is this m, uh, mv squared upon r. So these two are equal. Just like with the string, if the, the planet is not moving around fast enough, it is going, the string is going to not sustain it. The gravity is not going to hold it in, in orbit. The planet is going to crash into the sun. Remember that when you have something that is um, a short string, you have to swing it faster. When it's a long sw string, you can sw swing it slower. But also it depends on what the mass of the ball is. The same thing happens here. We have gravity pulling in, and we need to be moving at a certain minimum speed. And we can figure that out by equating the gravitational force and the centripetal force. But before we do that, let's talk about what it takes to get into orbit. So here I have just someone throwing a ball up in the air and gravity is pulling it back down. Now, if I throw it harder and faster, it's going to go higher and further. And eventually, if I keep throwing harder and faster, it is going to go into orbit. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have a position above the Earth and I'm standing there and I've got this little ball and I'm going to drop it. And if I just drop it, it's going to, if I just let it go without pushing it in any direction, it's just going to drop down to the Earth straight away. But if now I take that same ball and I just push it sideways a little bit, it is going to drop down, but it's going to drop down a little further along. Likewise, if I push it a little harder, it's going to drop down a little further along still. If I push it harder still, now it can go around the Earth. Now, in this case, it's going to go through the Earth's atmosphere, so it's not going to stay in orbit very well. And there is a minimum um, height, there is a minimum speed it needs to be going at. So basically, once I push it fast enough that this becomes a circle, that is then going to stay in orbit. And it's just going to go round and round and round until something else acts on it. If I push it a little harder still, now it's going to go around on this line F, and it's going to be an elliptical orbit. If I push it even harder, I can make it escape from Earth altogether. So here I have a cannon set on a hill, and I'm going to shoot uh, uh, something out of it. And if it's slow, it doesn't go very far. If I shoot a little faster, it's going to go a little bit further. But if I shoot it fast enough, now it's just going to keep going around and around and around. Obviously, it's going to hit the back of the cannon, which is a problem. But Basically, if I can shoot it fast enough, I can get it to go in orbit. And this is basically what a circular velocity is. So this idea of uh, getting into orbit and circular velocity also explains why um, astronauts are weightless in space. So here what we've got is a little platform high above the Earth. And if somebody just steps off it, they're going to drop straight down because there's gravity in space. It's going to pull them straight down onto the Earth. If they walk off it, they're going to go a little further away before they hit the Earth. If they run off it, maybe they get a little bit further. If they can run fast enough off that platform, they can put themselves into orbit. And they're still falling. They're falling toward the Earth all the time. But that curvature that they're falling with is the right curvature so that it stays in orbit around the Earth. And so what we have here is that you stay in orbit around the Earth um, if you can uh, go fast enough. Now, but that means that you're basically just falling, right? You are falling around the Earth. And when you fall around the Earth, you are in free fall. And the weightlessness is due to free fall. You can think of it as being that you're, that everything is falling around the Earth. And so you can't actually touch the ground, the inside of your spaceship. You cannot put pressure onto a weighing scale because everything is falling at the same rate. 
let's talk a little bit more about circular velocity and escape velocity. So we talked about how circular velocity is that minimum velocity that it that an object must have to stay in a circular orbit. And what we're going to do is we're going to equate the centripetal force and the gravitational force. And they can do a little bit of simple cancelling. So I've got an M on both sides. I've got an R here and two R's over there. So now I've got V squared equals GM over R. Remember, this is the gravitational constant. This is the mass of whatever's in the middle. It might be the Earth if it's something in orbit about the Earth. And this is the radius of the orbit. Okay. So the circular velocity is going to depend on the mass around which a thing is trying to orbit and its distance from the center of that object. If you go slower than that speed, you will crash, crash down. If you go faster than that speed, you may just go into an elliptical orbit like we saw, but if you go fast enough, you will achieve escape velocity. Escape velocity is the minimum speed needed to get into an orbit that lets you escape from the Earth. You will no longer stay in orbit. And in fact, it turns out that this escape velocity is only the square root of two times the circular velocity. Square root of two is about 1.41. So that means you only have to increase from circular velocity by 41% in order to get to escape velocity. If you double your speed, you will escape from the planet. I'm not gonna derive this here. It is derived on uh, another video on my YouTube channel. So I want to mention the idea of conic sections. So here I've got cones, okay? And each of these cones is being cut a different way. So if I cut across the top of a cone and I just cut horizontally, this, the shape that the, top, the edge of the cone makes is a circle. But if I cut at an angle across here, now I get an ellipse. So I can either get a circular orbit, an elliptical orbit. Depending on how the angle of this, I'm going to get you know, more and more elongated ellipses until eventually I am cutting through so that I don't hit this side at all. I hit the, the base of the cone and now I get a parabola. And this is what you get if you go at escape velocity. So let's say you're here and you're able to um, achieve escape velocity, then you would follow this path out of the solar system. And then the hyperbola is where you're going even faster and you'll get out even more. And that's taking a different angle through the cone. So remember, this is conic sections because you can make a cone and cut through it and get the shapes of all the different orbits. So just to remind you, Kepler's laws apply to everything that orbits everything else, not just planets. So it applies to moons around planets, moons around asteroids, stars orbiting other stars, stars orbiting the centers of galaxies. And ellipses are not the only orbital paths. So that those conic sections become important. So we can either have an ellipse, and remember a circle is just a special ellipse in the same way that a square is a special rectangle. Um, and that would be a bound orbit that the, the planet or whatever is orbiting is just going round and round and round. But if it's on a parabolic orbit, it comes in from not being bound to the sun or star and it leaves again, but it is affected by the gravity of the sun or whatever it's orbiting. And the same with the hyperbolic orbit. And just to remind you, this is how that fits with those conic sections. Okay, one of the things that's really tricky is changing an orbit. Once something's in orbit, you're gonna have to push it with a force in order to get it to change. So how do we do that? Well, here I've got a situation where here's the earth and we had something that was in a circular orbit, but then we gave it some thrust. It's going a bit faster. So now it's in a elliptical orbit but then it comes back around and we give it some more thrust. We, we use the, the engines and push it some more. And now we've achieved escape velocity and it's gonna go off on this parabolic orbit. But we can also use the gravity of other things in the solar system to help us change the direction of things as well as change the speed. And so here is an example of that. Here we have a, a comet coming in from way out in the solar system. If Jupiter wasn't right here, if it was on the other side of its orbit when this comet was coming in, it would follow this path that is basically um, hyperbolic. It would follow this path that is a dashed line. But because Jupiter is right here, as the comet comes in, it gets to here and Jupiter's gravity starts to pull on it. So it's not being bound to Jupiter. It is an unbound orbit. It is hyperbolic. But it affects how it is then approaching the sun. And so now as it approaches the sun, it approaches from the other side 
and it ends up in a bound orbit around the sun. So instead of being an unbound orbit around the sun, it is now bound. We actually use this idea of um, the gravity of other planets as well as asteroids uh, in order to get probes where we want them to go. We can plan on having things intercept uh, different objects like Jupiter or Saturn in order to change the direction and also to change their speed and get them where we want them to be at the time we want them to be there. And that's all we have for now.